So uh, I, I like to say I'm a child of Bayern Munich because I started for uh, the youth team when I was five and made over 600 games in the youth team. And then I come back, I was in a, in a third uh, biggest club in, in, in Munich because that's a big challenge, get from the youth team to the first team or even to the second team. Uh, that's the biggest step in football. And therefore I was in the third biggest uh, team in Munich and then I made it back to the second team of Bayern Munich. Uh, training a lot of times with uh, the big names like Klinsmann, Mateus. Uh, so I was in the first team often in the training sessions and uh, as well sometimes on the bench. And the highlight was the Champions League semi-final against the big team Ajax uh, with uh, Van der Sar, Cruyff, uh, Van Gaal as coach. And uh, I spent six years there and then <clears throat> made my journey through second and third uh, division clubs in Germany and Austria and on the end I ended in, in England. So and after that I've done uh, uh, my coaching career as that uh, in England, in Wales uh, and as well in Austria, first Bundesliga. But then I decided to um, uh, go more to the education part and then I come back to Bayern Munich. I've done some projects uh, around the world for Bayern Munich education projects and spent the last four years in, uh, in Thailand, in Asia. Uh, we built an academy, we done our own uh, uh, education project and that was uh, nearly similar to the projects we do here. And so Bayern chose me as the man uh, yeah, who be director of the Bayern Football Academy in, Aka, in Rwanda. We, we haven't had the time, unfortunately, we haven't had the time to do uh, the scouting we normally do. So we try to go to really every corner of the country and give every kid a chance to show his talent. Uh, but between uh, signing the contract with Bayern Munich or visit Rwanda, the time was too short. So we asked uh, local coaches or local academies uh, to send us the best players what is a good thing, because they know as well uh, how good the players are. And uh, it was a nice scouting, I remember when I was there and I was thinking, oh, now when they start playing football, I wasn't sure which, what kind of level it is. So I've never saw really, to be honest, uh, I don't know what level it was uh, the run in football in the youth uh, um, ages. And I was very surprised. I was smiling when I, when the kids starting playing football. Uh, very, very talented players here in Rwanda. <laughs> Mr. Trophy. Yeah, uh, I hope there's a trophy for the. It's eight teams. I hope there's a trophy for the fifth or sixth place. Uh, so. To be honest, I don't know really the other teams. You know, they come from uh, United States, Mexico, and uh, around the world. So I don't know really the level, but uh, we are very good prepared. And uh, I every day I have uh, so much fun with the boys because to see them playing football, it's it's just amazing with how many passions they play, and uh, we have a good team. But uh, it would be not good for me if we, if I say we, we are the winners. We come back with a tro we come back with a trophy for fifth or sixth place. But I think there will be will be more in the pipeline. Just for an example, Bayern Munich. Uh, every year from the youth team, under 19, for example. They like to play for even for the second team. They don't think about the first team. And every year there come 20 players, well, maybe more than 20 players, and like to have a space as place in the in the second team. Maybe one or two take it because it's hard. You know, you cannot every every year you cannot take 20 kids from the youth team to the first team. So that's as I said before, that's a very hard step, or that's the hardest step in football. 
what you can do, you can give them the best opportunities, so the best education in football, uh, to give them a chance. But on the end, uh, it's a thing in the head of the players. So if they understand how to play football, how quick uh, it's changed from youth football to the man football, uh, then they can survive in professional football and then they can or make the step to the professional football. Uh, but you need to give them the best education. So I don't know what's going wrong, uh, but from I think from 20 players, they should at least five should be made it to the professional teams because the professional teams always look for younger players, and that's the uh, that's the way how you do it. So the project with Bayern Munich, the Youth Cup, what we do now, uh, it's finished after the tournament. But we have the second project the, uh, with the U12 and U13 kids. And so the target is the African Cup in 2027. Uh, so yes, of course, the, every every year there will be uh, a selection. Uh, so, but that's the uh, that's a. a absolutely normal thing in football clubs or in federation and national teams then the best players need to play in the national team and uh, if one don't perform or you see a very big talented uh, player so uh, unfortunately it's not nice but we need to do the changes that you said okay the, the the good player need to be in the in the team and so one player is unlucky and maybe need to go out or maybe find his chance then one year later <clears throat> so he's not out of the team then some it's uh, he's still in our focus so but that's a normal normal thing that you change players to have to be really successful first of all I think uh, the Africans footballer they have one thing that it's it's step by step the European footballers lose and that's the passion because in, in Europe they they concentrate too much on education but if you don't have the passion if you don't have the natural feeling the natural uh, behavior to be we said street footballer we said uh, footballers with no education they don't uh, been in a club for a while or so you will see there comes a lot of players in the next decades from from Africa I'm, I'm pretty sure what's the situation in Rwanda is um, I think that there are two things or three things maybe the education from the coaches uh, but it's uh, it's a thing you you need to implement also in the in the, in the um, development of the whole situation. So, for example, it's hard for a coach if you have a if you have 20 kids or 30 kids, and the kids the school ends at six o'clock or five o'clock, and the sun goes down at six. That's the way. So you have one hour, uh, and maybe not even you you don't have even at that hour, and it's tough if you don't have floodlights. Uh, I know it's tough for the coaching. It's not all about the education. It's the situation. Uh, so, as a coach, you don't have the time really to work with the kids. And for me, the second thing is uh, there are no, no leagues. So, when I grow up, for example, or in, in the countries, in other countries uh, in Europe, so you start to have a league when you're six years old, you're playing in a league. So, every, you, you're training and every weekend you have a game, competition. And that's over the whole year. You maybe you'll be first in the in the league or last or whatever. So you, you every every week from week to week, you try to do it better or or to find a way how you win games. And if you don't have leagues or these competitions every weekend, not only to play fun, f play football for fun, to really have a competition, uh, you don't build the winning mentality. You know, it's, it's, it's totally different if you training or have a, a game in the training session or if you have a game where it's important to win. And uh, that's the thing 
I think the federation or the government maybe can work on it to give a little bit more the, the football kids a little bit more opportunity, time, maybe school classes, have a football class or whatever, uh, to have two, three times per week the time to play football apart from other sports or other educations. That would be very helpful and uh, maybe you, you uh, can build leagues. Uh, to be honest, I haven't seen now so many coaches working here. So what I see in the course, what we actually do, uh, there is also there's passion, there's a willing to, to have more knowledge and to do it what I see, because I also are training with the kids at the same time, but what I see uh, at the coaching education, uh, they do it really good. So. They have as well, they have, or it's the same, they have the passion, what is a very, very good fundamental thing to have. Uh, and I'm sure in the future uh, there will be good coaches, or maybe there are still good coaches here. As I said, I don't want to blame my colleagues because uh, I haven't uh, seen so much you know, here. Yeah, the, the mood with, with, with Harry Kane is, 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 uh, is good or getting better, you know, you, you, that's what kids need, or, 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 that's what the fans need, they need heroes. Uh, best example is the last 50 years, we have had always good uh, goalkeepers in Germany, except Maya, uh, Neuer, Ilgner, whatever, it's, it's so, the kids looking uh, forward to be a good goalkeeper then as well, and that's, uh, and that's what you need in a football club, to have heroes and uh, I think if, if, uh, if it starts most of the time in a country or in a, in a region, it starts with one hero and then it, that's the spark and then uh, you see uh, the football is growing or that the passion is growing then much, much more. Yeah. I, I hope I don't look like Thomas Müller. <laughs> why, the, why the rumors come? I don't because know. <laughs> maybe I he's very Bavarian. He's one of these uh, last really Bavarian players. Or and I born in Munich, and maybe we have the same character or smiling or whatever or behavior. Uh, but uh, it's a rumor.